Mm, so next up we have Keda, Keda Martin, uh, visualizing ZOD data in web maps. All right, hello, my name is Keda Martin and I work at Carbon Plan and I'm here to give you a very quick talk on visualizing ZAR data in web maps. So actually, let's get you oriented thinking about web maps by looking at Google Maps. Um, really fundamental part of web maps is the interactiv interactivity and how I can pan and zoom through a map and get different views into in space. Um, and, the, and the thing that accommodates this is that the map is fetching new information, more detailed information as I zoom out, information about different areas as I pan. Um, and this is a, the, the pattern that's formalized around this is called is using map tiles. So square, in our case, um, chunks of data that are that are fetched and stitched together and rendered within the map. So, this is supported and standardized through tools like Mapbox JL, JS, GLJS, which renders and customizes vector tiles in the client, which we've used in the past, and um, some limitations we run into using Mapbox and looking at other tools out there is that vector tiles were, as a, creating vector tiles was something we uniquely had to do for rendering in web maps. Um, and it was also just an inefficient format for representing gridded raster data, which is what we work with in climate. Um, there are not there's not tooling that's designed to accommodate data with many dimensions and in general there's just limited flexibility around styling and computation so we wanted to do more and we decided to turn to a format we're familiar with which is R. so here's a very quick demo to give you the idea we're replicating the panning and zooming um, and map tiling pattern that we saw on google maps but we're using um, raster data uh, which is coming from czar trunks as the map tile so we'll get come back to this demo in a bit, but uh, under the hood, what does this look like? Well, we're using multi-dimensional data pyramids in ZAR format, um, and we created a small library ND pyramid to standardize certain processing steps. So we're using the Web Mercator projection for our map tiles. We're using the multi-scale specification, and we're using ZLib compression, and we've standardized on a 128 by 128 pixel chunk, which that chunk becomes our map tile that we're fetching as we pan through the world. Um, on the right, we have an example data set where, or it's an example pyramid where uh, we're looking at monthly temperature data. And at the zero group, we can see that there's just, the data just spans 128 by 128 pixels. There's only a single chunk um, or a single map tile, which is representing this, a very coarse view of this global data set. Um, and then as we move down the pyramid or down to the first group, uh, we have bit higher resolution, 256 by 256 pixels, which means that there are gonna be four map tiles to represent the globe at this view, and so on. As we move down the groups, there'll be more and more higher resolution um, tiles or chunks, and this is where the idea of the pyramid comes in. Um, and then on the front end, what we have is a system of React components, which we've um, exported from a new library that we created called Carbon Plan Maps. Um, here we have a raster component, which is pointing to a czar store um, and then is rendered within a map component. So what's happening here is that the raster component is responsible for figuring out, given um, the web map interface and where the user is in the map, figuring out which z chunks to fetch from czar and then rendering those using WebGL. Um, and yeah, so going back to our demo, um, what does this look like? So we can see the, you know, the higher resolution, lower levels of the pyramid coming in as I zoom in in, in the map. Um, and yeah, this is really just the czar version of what we saw on Google Maps. Another thing that's really nicely accommodated by czar is we we're looking at chunks that also contain 12 time steps. So I can pan through time. And what we're doing is just indexing into different parts of the chunk along the time dimension. Um, and same for variable. It's the fourth dimension we're dealing with in this pyramid. Um, looking at a slightly more complicated example, this is a web map we created to map the potential climate benefits and the cost of, of growing seaweed, um, scaling up seaweed farming. So what's happening in this map is that each chunk contains a bunch of input data. So the potential for growing seaweed at a given at each location, the depth of the ocean, 
um, wave height, distance support, a bunch of information. And then on the fly in the map, we're calculating the estimated removal cost. And we're also, because this is on the fly happening client side, um, we're able to take into account different user specified parameters. And so um, here, <laughs> because we're just able to do whatever computation we want to on top of the data that's coming through in the czar chunks, we, we, this opens up a whole range of possibilities for what our map app, web maps can do, including doing things like taking in user inputs. And also I earlier mentioned the flexibility around styling. We can like very easily adjust the color map, um, things like that. So it's a complicated map, but really this pattern of using czar as the data source and the components built around the, the React components we built to kind of uh, standardize on that pattern has made this pretty ergonomic and making tools like this much easier on our end. So thank you. That was a very quick tour through our world of web mapping. Um, I left our contact information here. Please reach out if you have any questions or want to contribute to our mapping library. Um, really, whatever. All right. Well, thank you so much. Bye.